So in this video, we're going to start the design for our social network series. We're going to be learning how to design the login page. Not just are we going to be deciding what it looks like, we're going to be implementing the functionality behind the login page using JavaScript. So let's get started. So to create the design, I'm going to use some software called Bootstrap Studio. This is the website for the software here. And the creators of the software have kindly given me two licenses to give away. What this software does is it makes it so much quicker to create websites using the CSS Bootstrap framework. Bootstrap on its own makes it quicker to create websites, but using Bootstrap Studio just speeds it up unbelievably. So I'm going to be using that software. You can use just plain Bootstrap on its own, or you can use CSS on its own. And all of the design source code will be hosted on the GitHub repository. So you can download the official source code and you can use my design if you don't want to create your own. So when we have this software, what we want to do is we want to create a new design. We're going to call it Social Network and we're going to click Create. So here's what our page looks like at the minute. It's blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Preview. I'm going to turn that on. And if I click on open in browser, you can see now we have a preview of our website and we have social network up at the top. I said in this video, we're going to be creating the design for the login page and using Bootstrap Studio, we can do that extremely quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Bootstrap Studio. We're going to click here and we're going to add a new page and we're going to call this page login. We're going to go down here and rename it. And now what we're going to do is we go to components, we search for login and Bootstrap Studio comes with all these components built in. Here's a login form that's already been created and here's another login form and we're going to use this one here. So we're going to drag it on and this one fills the entire page. Now if I just go back to our browser, you can see it's automatically refreshed and it shows our login form. So we're going to use this login form for the social network series. It wants an email and a password and we normally log in with our username and our password. So what we'll do is we'll go back to Bootstrap Studio and here when we have email, we're going to click that. We're going to go to the cog icon, which is options. And we're going to change the name of that from email to username. We're going to give it a placeholder of username. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button. We're going to go to animation, which is this star icon. We're going to click trigger and we're just going to set the trigger to hover at the moment. We're going to change that later. But what we want to do is we want to click on shake. So when we click play, you can see the login button shakes. And we're going to use that to tell the user that their password or the username was invalid. So now that we have our basic login page created, what we're going to do is we're going to click export. And we're going to export it to somewhere on our computer. So I'm going to store it in the social network folder. And what I'm going to do is just click export says it's been exported. We can open it up in the folder. And you can see here, here are our two pages. We have login and index. If I click on login, it's exactly what we created. And when we hover our mouse over here, the login button shakes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to implement the login system. So to do that, we're going to use the API that we created in the simple RESTful API series. You can see over here, I'm going to put a link to this video on the screen and we're going to use this API to log the user in. So here is the source code of the API series. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that. And in our social network series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called API and I'm going to paste those in there. I'm going to open this API up and I know the database class is duplicated for the minute, but we're going to leave that for now. And we already have our login and our log out system created. So to do the login, all we need to do is send a post request with the username and the password to our API. And because we used Bootstrap Studio for the design, if I right click here, view page source, you can see we have jQuery automatically included for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the assets and the login.html page. And I'm going to paste them in here. So I'm going to open login.html up in our text editor and up below the JavaScript that Bootstrap Studio includes, we're going to include our own. So we're going to create our own script tags. When we copied the API, we left out a file. We left out the hasty access file. So just make sure that you create the hasty access file and you paste this in again. This is just the same hasty access code from the other tutorial series. And once you've done that, we go back to login.html and we're ready to go and we're ready to send our post request. So before we're ready to do that, we need to change the input type of the button from submit to button because otherwise, whenever we click that, the form will submit and the page will refresh. And we also want to be able to grab the username and the password using their IDs. So to do that, we'll just give username and ID of username and password and ID of password. And we'll change the type from email to text because otherwise we'll only be able to type in emails. And then what we'll do is we'll just say login dot click. So that's our login button. So we need to give that an ID of login. So here we're saying when we click the login button, we're going to run a function and this function is going to be our Ajax request. So we're going to say dollar dot Ajax, which is the way you call jQuery's Ajax method. And this method takes one parameter, which is just a load of JSON. So we just put in two curly braces. So the first parameter in the JSON we put in is type and it's going to be post. 
because we're sending a post request. The URL is gonna be the URL of our API. So we say URL colon API slash users because we're calling the user's endpoint because that's the endpoint in the API that allows us to log a user in and log a user out. There's another parameter called process data. We're gonna set that to false. That's optional, but we're gonna put it in anyway. The content type of the request is just content type and it's gonna be application slash JSON because we're sending a JSON string. The data is next and that's gonna be the actual JSON we wanna send, which is just gonna be a string. And then finally we have success, which is a function that takes a variable R, but that is our response data. So now we're just gonna put in our JSON string. So we're gonna actually change these to single quotes because in JSON to use a string, you have to use double quotes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in two curly brackets and we're gonna put in double quotes and say username equals. And the username is gonna be equal to the value of the username text box. So to get that value, we wanna firstly set a string by using two double quotes. Then we want to use two single quotes to split the string. And here we wanna use jQuery to access the username text box. And then we wanna use the val method to get its value. So we're gonna copy and paste this, put a comma here, and then we're gonna set password in double quotes is equal to the value from the password text box. And then on success, we're gonna say console.log R, which is the response that we get back from the API, which in this case will be the login token for the user. And finally, before we run this, we want to change the API endpoint from users to auth, because if we go to the API, you can see that auth is actually the endpoint when we send our post request to log the user in, not users. So if I refresh and I right click and go to inspect element and I go to the network tab, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a correct username and a random incorrect password. I'm gonna click login and you can see now we get an error. It says a 401 unauthorized. It looks like we made a mistake. We didn't actually make a mistake because if we go to the API, you can see that it's been told to send a 401 response whenever the username or the password is incorrect. And we also wanna send back some JSON. So what we're gonna do is just copy this echo and just paste it down here and say error. We'll just put in an error or something like and we'll just copy this. We can use the fact that there's an error in our JSON code to tell the user on the login page that there's something's gone wrong. So if we just paste it down here again and we run this one more time. So what we want to do is just click login one more time and you can see we get another auth. We scroll down, there's the username and the password and then there is our response. So what we'll do is we'll put in the correct password which in this case is just test pass. We'll click login. You can see this last auth isn't read. We click on that and then the response has a token in it. And if we go to console, you can see there is the token printed out. We'll also put in another one. We have success, so we wanna put in error. We'll run a function. And we'll log the response for that as well. So now if we refresh and we just click login, you can see we have an error. So now that we have access to our error message, we can tell our login button to shake whenever the username and the password is incorrect. So what we'll do is we'll right click and here is where our animation code is. So we'll just drag that into the address bar. All it does is it adds a special animated class. What we'll do is we'll just say set timeout. We'll run a function. And then we'll say the function will run after two seconds. And this will be the function that removes the animation. And down here was where we will add the animation. So we'll just copy this. Paste it in here. So what we're going to do is just copy this. And we'll just delete this element variable and we'll just paste in the actual jQuery targeting the text box like that. And then we'll just delete this mouse leave for now. And then finally what we'll do is we'll just scroll up and we'll delete the animation from here. Now if we run this, we type in anything or we just leave it blank, we'll get an invalid response from our API. So now if I click on login, you can see the login button just shook. Now if I click it again, it won't shake. So what we have to do is use our timeout method and we'll just paste in the code up here. It's very, very similar. We just delete mouse leave. Delete Elm and replace it with that. So now if we just run this one more time, click it, we get an error. We click it again, we get the error again. And see if we click it too quickly, it won't shake again. But after two seconds, it's ready to start shaking again. And then finally, if I put in a valid username, which is verified and a valid password, click login. Now we get our token returned to us and the text box doesn't shake. Click it again. We keep, every time I click it, we'll get a new token returned. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. In the next part, what we're going to be doing is learning how to do the same thing with our registration form. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. The source code for all this will be on GitHub. If you have any questions, don't forget to email me at francis.hyco.org and I'll see you next time.